Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Movie Melee. We got an exciting one for you today. It's another number one contenders match, unless it's the first one that's coming out or being uploaded, then it's a number one contenders match. Uh, we've had a very large uh, title picture building up to a four person title match coming up soon. And we got an interesting one for you today. We got Payson Johnson, fresh off of a victory against Tony Durso, I believe, taking on Jeremy Adams, who we haven't seen since he played for the title against David Nishimoto. Should be a really good match. So without any further ado, I, we're going to jump right into uh, pre-match interviews, starting with our lower-ranked competitor, Mr. Payson, the Cinemaster Johnson. Uh, Payson, uh, you've been playing really, really well uh, all season long, fresh off of two very impressive victories against John Marr and Tony Durso. Thoughts on your opponent, in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and Jeremy Adams, who I believe you haven't faced uh, before in singles. So Not it's too. an interesting matchup. Thoughts on your opponent? Listen, what I was going to say in this pre-match interview made a lot more sense when Cam was going to be here. But I'm still going to say it anyway. Uh, this right here, as many of you will probably guess, uh, it's a lot like uh, the Marines from One Piece uh, post the Battle of Marine Ford. Uh, Boatman is Sengoku. Boatman's the fleet admiral. Uh, he's starting to feel like his time uh, here might be over, and uh, he wants to get a successor. And in his last match, he said he wanted to face Jeremy. Jeremy's Aokiji in this situation. He's the successor. Uh, uh, Boat believes that, that, that he is the true one. But uh, not everyone out there believes that Aokiji is the true successor. Some people believe that it's, uh, that it's Akainu who should be the successor, and that is me. And uh, as we all know in One Piece, uh, Akainu and Aokiji went out and battled for five days on the island of Punk Hazard. Epic battle. And we all know who won that match. Jeremy, you're a great competitor. I hope you bring the fire. I'm bringing the magma today. Let's go. All right, cool. I have no idea what any of that means, but yeah, best of luck sure. to you. Uh, we'll now bring in your opponent for this evening, Jeremy Adams, as long as, as well as his manager, uh, Caleb Boatman. Uh, Look, Jeremy? It, was, it was Kiwi that asked Sagoku to manage him and not Koda. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so that's, that's on Kenai over here. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, thoughts on your opponent today, Payson Johnson, who you haven't faced before? Well, I I have to admit I haven't I'm not I haven't watched One Piece, but I have been watching uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, and I definitely consider myself Aang for whatever that's worth. So, <laughs> but in any case, uh, yeah, I'm excited for this match and nervous. Payson is a really great competitor, but you know he's in my faction. We're all friends here, and whatever happens. Uh, it, you know, I'm going to be happy, you know, on some level, but I'm going to bring my A game and I got my buddy Caleb here uh, uh, helping me today. So hopefully that'll get me a little bit of a push. Um, you know, Payson's got a little more momentum with recent singles matches, but, you know, teams with you, Caleb, I think has helped keep me somewhat sharp. So I'm still feeling like uh, I could do this today. Let's catch that Pokemon. <laughs> Over right. 9,000. Well, we will now put Caleb backstage for now, and we will get into round number one, which will work like this. This is the uh, whiteboard round, standard whiteboard round, eight questions, eight different categories of movie trivia. If any player uh, gets all eight questions right, by the way, you're right. These, uh, these questions are answered individually in a whiteboard. I'm stumbling through this whole thing. If you get all eight questions right, you get a bonus question, also worth one point. Uh, three repeats, one challenge to use for the entirety of the match. Any questions before we get started? Cool. All right, so then your first question in round number one will come in the category of music. What eastern U.S. state is 2021's CODA set in? I like this film quite a bit. It's cute. Very nice. Very nice, pleasant film. Best picture? I don't know. But, you know, whatever. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Jeremy first. Massachusetts. And Payson? Yeah, a lot of Red Sox hats in that movie. Massachusetts. Massachusetts is correct. One to one as you get into your next question, which will come in the category of the 1990s. Who stars as Nomi Malone in Showgirls? I have not seen this one, but I believe this one also won Best Picture. Back to back, that's crazy. Wow. What a film. I don't know. This has been it's been a rough day, guys, for me. Five, 
four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Payson. Elizabeth Berkeley. And Jeremy? Elizabeth Berkeley. Both correct. And tied up as we get into your next question in the category of the 1970s. In five easy pieces, Robert works at what kind of location before leaving to before leaving for Washington? What type of location? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say for this one. Showgirls, what a movie. Five, four, three. I'll repeat two. the question. All right, that is Payson's first repeat. In five easy pieces, Robert works at what kind of location before leaving for Washington? I have worked at many locations, such as Earth, and that is all. Countdown in three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We will go to uh, Jeremy first. I said oil field. And Payson? Oil field. Uh, I think we can accept that. Yeah, the answer we have here is oil rig. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so three to three. We will get into your next question, which will come in the category of the Oscars. Name both Oscars Boys in the Hood was nominated for. Yeah, I love uh, I love solo hosting. I don't get to do it very often. Uh, I lied. I don't actually like it that much. But, you know, it is what it is. We're making it through it. Five, four, three, I'll get two. a repeat on that. All right, that is the first repeat now for Jeremy. Question again. Name both Oscars Boys in the Hood was nominated for. Still need to catch this one. I've heard it's very good. Phenomenal. Yes, yes. Man, I've barely seen anything. How the hell did I win the title? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Payson first. Best original screenplay and best director. And Jeremy? Best original screenplay and director. Both correct. So four to four, stay tied up as we get into your next question in the 2000s. In the game plan, what is Peyton allergic to that she has a reaction to while eating ice cream? Uh, the answer is not ice cream. I can say that. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't know. Hosting. Fun. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. We'll go to Jeremy. Yeah, you guys got me on this one. I said nuts. And Payson? Cinnamon? Uh, nuts is the correct answer. Whoa! <laughs> so. Oh my god! Yeah, that's right. Oh, my God. All right, so no <laughs> challenge. And we, uh, Jared Me gets the first lead there as we get into your next question, which will come in the category of directors. Who directed The Last Emperor, The Conformist, and The, and the Dreamers? Sorry. Stumbling through all my words today. That's fine. What's your favorite of these three films? Comment in the comments down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Payson first. Bernardo Bertolucci. And Jeremy? Bernardo Bertolucci. Both correct. Then your penultimate question in, the, in round number one will come in the category of musicals. In what classic musical does a criminal seduce a Christian woman who works for the Save a Soul mission? I have never saved a soul, unfortunately. I let a lot of them pass. Done some things I regret, and I apologize. Five, four, three, two, You're amazing. One. 
pens down, uh, we will go to Jeremy first. Guys and dolls. And Payson? Guys and dolls. Guys and dolls, that's correct. Uh, so now we are in a situation where if uh, Jeremy gets this question right, he will have a perfect round. So your final question in round number one will come in the category of coming of age. Lucas Hedges, Catherine Waterston, and Alexa Demi give performances in what coming of age film? Should say just for uh, just for uh, posterity. Normally it would be coming of age slash teen. So for whoever wrote this question, shame on you. That's not a category. But thank you. This was a lovely round one. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Payson first. Should have used a repeat for nuts. Uh, Mid nineties. And Jeremy? No, I didn't have it. I said Ben is back. Mid nineties is correct. So with that, Payson ties the game up at seven. Uh, so we'll now get into round number two, which will work like this. This is the wheel round. So each competitor will get the chance to spin the wheel, which will decide what category they'll be answering questions in. Tonight, five questions, each worth two points apiece, unless they check down to multiple choice, in which case it will be worth one point. Stealing is available in this round. The categories that they can potentially land on today are Joel Cohen, 60s Hammer Horror, Family, War, Recent Releases, 1980s, 1970s, and Directors, as well as Spinners or Opponents' Choice. So, Jeremy, since you are the higher-ranked competitor, we'll bring in your manager and you can decide whether you'd like to spin first or defer to Payson. Do you have a gut feeling? I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I want to go first this time. Okay. So it's a, Let, yeah. Let's keep you in that mode then. Let's, let's yeah. go for it. You're having a great round one. Let's just Thank keep the momentum going. All right. So spinning first? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So then the first, your first spin will be 19 inches. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I'll keep it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then we'll go backstage and as well as Caleb Whitman. And I will be reading you your questions in 1980s. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. First question. What 80s drama features performances from John Hurt, Brad Dorif, and Isabel Huppert? I'm going to go multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, Mississippi Burning, B, Dune, C, Heaven's Gate, or D, 1984. Heaven's Gate. That is correct for one point. I uh, made a mistake there in writing, but that's okay. Uh, uh, next question will come in the category 1980s. What am I doing? Where specifically does uh, Liz find the body of Kate Miller near the be near the beginning of Dress to Kill? I know where the opening scene takes place, but I don't know if that's where she finds the body, so I'll go multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, a bathroom, B, a closet, C, a freezer, or D, an elevator. I'm going to go elevator. That is correct for one point. Next question. What instrument does David Bowie's character play in The Hunger? Yeah, I got to go multiple. All right. Your options are A, a cello, B, saxophone, C, violin, or D, trumpet. I'm going to try cello. That is correct for one point. So now your penultimate question in this category. In UHF, what is the profession of Stanley, the man who becomes the host of the hit show Stanley Spadowski's Clubhouse on Channel 62? The janitor. That is correct for two points. Now your final question in this category. 
who directed An Officer and a Gentleman? Taylor Hackford. That is correct for two more points. So coming out of that round, I now have uh, Jeremy in the lead, 14 to Payson, 7. So we'll now bring back the wheel. And Payson, this will be your first spin. Okay. And you land on Spinner's Choice. I am going to take... You know, I'll take directors. All right. So we'll put this backstage right now. And your first question in the category of directors. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Who directed 2015's Room? Lenny Abramson. That is correct for two points. All right, your second question. Who directed 1946's Beauty and the Beast and 1950's Orpheus? I'll go multiple. All right. Your options are A, Jean Cocteau, B, Francois Truffaut, C, Ingmar Bergman, or D, Robert Bresson? Repeat the options. All right. Your options again are A, Jean Cocteau, B, Francois Truffaut, C, Ingmar Bergman, or D, Robert Brisson. I'm going to say A. That is correct for one point. Your third question. Who directed A New Leaf? Blank check with Griffin and David. Elaine May. That is, that is correct for two points. Uh, your penultimate question. Jennifer Kent made her directorial debut with what 2010s horror film? What's the score? 14 to 12. Five. I'm going to take a Four. chance and say the Babadoo. That is correct for two points. Now your final question in this category. What was the last film by Tony Scott to be released in the 1990s? Five, four, repeat. All right, that is your second repeat. What was the last film by Tony Scott to be released in the 1990s? Enemy of the State. That is correct for two points. And the lead, so coming out of round number two, I have the score at Payson in the lead, 16 to 14. Very close game, but we will now get into round number three, which will work like this. It is the pick your poison round. So how it is going to work is like this. We will be going back and forth drafting categories, starting with the player in the lead. Once a category is drafted, it cannot be drafted by your opponent. Once all categories are drafted, the player behind will answer questions until they take the lead. You will choose which category and for what point value you would like to take first, and we will go until there is a mathematical, mathematical winner. The categories that they could choose from tonight are action slash adventure, biopics, sci-fi fantasy, Oscars, mystery slash thrillers, war, musicals, and the 2000s. So we'll let them pick their categories right now, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. The players have drafted their categories. We will now start with Jeremy since he is down by two. So Jeremy, what category and for what point value would you like to take first? Yeah, let's, let's do one in musicals. All right. So your question in the category of musicals. Who plays Stephen Sondheim in Tick, Tick, Boom? Oh, my God. Five, four, three, two, one. Repeat. All right. That is your second repeat. Who plays Stephen Sondheim in Tick, Tick, Boom? 
Bradley Whitford. That is correct for one point. Good job. I was thrown off because he he like does his his own voice at the end of the film. <laughs> and I'm like, does he play himself? Oh no, no, there was an actor. <laughs> All right, so we all oh, stick. Wait, with... now hold on. I'm I'm so <laughs> I'm no, so okay. So then <laughs> we will stick I with was you maybe then. Maybe going to challenge if I couldn't remember Bradley Whitford. Yeah. <laughs> so we we will stick uh, with you then, Jeremy. Uh, what category and for what point value would you like next? Yeah, um, I'm going to do two in war. Two in war. All right. Yeah. So your question in the category of war: Who plays Gorgo, Leonard Leonidas's wife in Three Hundred? Uh, Lena Headey. That is correct for two points. I hope I probably pronounced that wrong, but that's fine. Uh, I I was trying. It's <laughs> it's hard to remember. We all we all know Lena Headey is really married to Mark Menchaca, so let's let's just. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then now we will go over to Payson, since you you are now down by one point. Uh, what category and for what point value would you like? Yeah, I'm not gonna get cute. I'll uh, one pointer in action adventure. All right. So then your question in action slash adventure. What magical item brings Danny into Jack Slater's world in Last Action Hero? It's a ticket. That is correct for one point. And since we are tied up now, but Payson has more questions, uh, what category and for what point value would you like now? I will take my two in sci-fi fantasy. Oh, all right. So your question in the category of sci-fi fantasy. Who stars as Elwood in 1950s Harvey? James Stewart. That is correct for two points. Now we will go back over to Jeremy. Uh, you have your mystery and biopics for three and four remaining. Which category and for what? which point value would you like? I'm going to try mystery thriller for three. Okay. So then your question in the category of mystery slash thriller. In Disturbia, who plays Robert Turner, the neighbor Kale suspects to be a murderer? David Morse. That is correct for three points. So now we'll go over to Payson. Uh, Oscars 2000s, which would you like for three or four points? I will take my three in 2000s. All right. So your question in the category of the 2000s. What 2000s film is about the trial of a former employee who shot up a stock brokerage firm? Two, five, four, three. Find me guilty. That is incorrect. We are looking for runaway jury. That wasn't one of the ones I was thinking. Okay. All right. So here's the situation now. Jason has his four pointer in the category of Oscars. Uh, if he hits this, he will send it back over to Jeremy. If he misses, Jeremy will be the winner. So your question in the category of Oscars. Who was the first person to win Best Director for their debut film? Five, four, I three. will use my repeat. All right, that is your final repeat. Who was the first person to win Best Director for their debut film? Five, four, three. Delbert Mann? That is correct for four big points. Oh my gosh. 
So now, Jeremy, whatever happens, great game. Great, great game, game, Jason. Great game. Phenomenal game. game. Uh, so we will now go into uh, Jeremy's four-point question in the category of biopics. If he hits this, he will win. If he miss, if he misses, then Payson will be the winner. So your question in the category of biopics. Your question, Jeremy, in the in the category of biopics. What is the name of the real life person portrayed by Jeff Daniels and Matthew Modine in the films Steve Jobs and Jobs? And I will say we need first and last name. Five, four, three, two, Grippy. one. All right, that is your final repeat. What is the name of the real life person portrayed by Jeff Daniels and Matthew Modine in the films Steve Jobs and Jobs? Yeah, unfortunately, this this isn't history that I'm not up on. So great game, Payson. I'm just gonna say Bill Gates. And your winner, Payson Johnson. Uh, the correct answer we were looking for is John Scully. Scully. Yeah. John. So, but a absolutely phenomenal game. We will now get great into game. great game. We will now get into post match interviews. Jason. Incredible. Yeah. Starting with our second place finisher today, uh, Caleb, Bo not Caleb Boatman, uh, jo <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Adams. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place tonight. Uh, Jeremy, you played one hell of a game, like at 20 Thank points. You is nothing to sneeze at like that's absolutely incredible honestly one of one of the better matches i think we've seen all season uh thoughts on how you played overall i feel good about how i played you know there's always a little bit of luck like you know i would have been 10 out of 10 on the directors but you know that's just how it falls so you know maybe you know maybe if i'd had him i don't know maybe if i did respawn on 80s i could have got directors but i wasn't going to do that so you just you never know but I feel good. Like I didn't, I didn't like, there wasn't anything that I knew that I screwed up on. That's always a good feeling. Like if I knew it, I knew it. And then there were some really lucky guesses where I just kind of reasoned it out. So uh, yeah, I, I feel good about that, but yeah, Payson, I think, I think it's the Marty. I think the Delver man, Marty pull is, I think he kind of deserves to win this match on that. That was incredible. I know Caleb would have got it, but it's still incredible to, to see somebody pull something like that. And yeah, you had to ask about a biopic, which is like a subject matter I, I'm not that into. So that's just, there's a lot of other like biographical films that are more in my wheelhouse, but you know, now I, I feel good. I played well. And uh, you know, that four way title match is, you know, going to be, I'll go ahead and let Payson deal with the stress of that and, and that studying for that. And, and uh, yeah, we'll get back to focusing on the, on the team. So <laughs> brutal, brutal is what that match is going to be. So, yeah. Fun. So fun. That's fair. But, well, yeah, I, this does bring an end to your uh, season in multiplex for 2023, but overall I think are very solid showing this year for you, thank you. on your return. Uh, so when you come back next season, assuming you will be, I don't know. I'm just assuming that you will be coming back next season. But uh, right. who would you like to play when you return? I do plan to come back. And, uh, I mean, I, I, I got a lot of rematches. You know, David Nishimoto, Payson, uh, Marangona. There's a lot of people that I end up playing a lot. And, and uh, it's always good to kind of get some rematches on some of those guys. So we'll see if maybe we can look at something like that next year. <laughs> that's fair yeah, i'd absolutely like to see those uh but anyways thank you for uh being here jeremy we'll put you backstage for now and we will bring in the first place finisher for this evening one pace and johnson this feels weird doing a one-on-one -on -one interview but <laughs> you don't get those uh, very often well uh well two beautiful men talking to each other <laughs> get my vibes but uh <laughs> pace and same same thing i said to jeremy applies to you here uh absolutely phenomenal game from both of you guys uh, 23 points. That's a hell of a statement, I think, going into a title match. Thoughts on your performance and then the match overall? First off, I just want to say phenomenal game to Jeremy once again. Um, I think most people know 
I've been watching since 2019. So when I play people like Jeremy or when I play people like Boat or when I play people like Marangoni, it feels like I'm playing like celebrities in my mind. Like this is how I view these people two years before, because like, it took me two years to enter the community. So I like, I, I have a very high viewpoint of them. And when I put myself in these matches, oftentimes I, I, I have a tough time viewing myself as like, on their level sometimes and i think sometimes moments like these just i don't want to sound too cocky it makes me feel like i need to give myself more credit because it's been a while since i felt this good about a win in like in a while like i i, I feel really really i i said before i said last match when i played tony i'm going to have to have a game like i had against tony if i'm going to win against jeremy i think i had that match yeah, absolutely. Well, now with this win, you do advance to the four-way uh, title match. Uh, we know one of their opponents for sure, Caleb Boatman, obviously the reigning champion. Uh, so thoughts on playing him and thoughts on who else would you like to see in that uh, upcoming match? Uh, am I very excited to uh, be playing in a title match? Yes. Like Boat said, pain, pain. But no, honestly, like I'm very excited to play Boatman. Um I would love to play Cam, keep it in the faction as much as you can. And I think if, if David makes it as well, just my teammate, I think that would just be four absolute Titans just going at it, like in the trivia sense, not in other senses. Like I, I think that would be a great, wow. Okay. This has gone on long enough. Take me off Dylan. <laughs> okay. Fair. Well, uh, thank you, Payson. Congrats. We'll put you backstage for now. And I will finish this up as good as I possibly can, even though I've, it's been, it's been a rough one today on the hosting desk. But uh, anyways, again, like I said, fantastic match. Like really one of the best I think I've seen all season. Both competitors absolutely brought it and lived up to the hype. Or, uh, this is one of those matches where just on paper, it's like this this can't really go wrong. Like this is a good match. And yeah, both of them very definitely delivered. Excited to see what Payson does in the title match. But uh, yeah, that'll be all for us over at here over here at Movie Melee. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you to the writers. Thank you to the showrunners. Thank you to the admins, players, everyone, all of them. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Goodbye. Storm in the castle. Think it'll work? Like? Goodbye.